Have you ever wondered how streamers can play different types of FPS games and just hit the ground running? How their transition from game to game is just so seamless and effortless that they dominate with any weapon in hand? Well, for most people, this is what is considered a God-given talent. However, for those who are closely observing, this is what is known as a strong foundation. A foundation that lies consistent throughout any type of FPS game that you play. Now, I'm not saying that there is no such thing as talent because there will always be a LeBron James when it comes to FPS games like Shroud or if you watch Apex, it's Timmy. However, if you're one of many like myself where talent is not as abundant, you have to compensate by building fundamentals that are just as solid as those that have talent. One of these fundamentals being centering. Centering is easily one of the most important aspects of any first person shooter, being that no matter what game you play, in order to hit your mark, the target needs to be in the center of the screen for the shot to connect, thus the name, centering. Mastering this enhances almost every aspect of gameplay, from tracking to click timing. You are essentially building a type of tunnel vision or acuity when you see the target, making all the distractions that exist in every FPS become blurred out, leaving only the target that lies in front of you. This can help your tracking by maintaining the target in the center of the screen, allowing you to have a high probability of hitting your target while they or you are moving. I also mentioned this in my aiming and movement video, which I'll have linked above here, which essentially illustrates how model aiming is based on centering. By helping you track a target, much like a race car driver tries to maintain control when his car is spinning out by keeping his eyes on the location of where he wants his car to go. This aids in click timing when it comes to one-shot weapons such as snipers, hand cannons, and scout rifles by removing the variable of consciously having to worry about navigating your reticle to the target because the target will always be kept in the center of the screen, which allows you to focus on precision and keeping up with shot rhythm to maintain accuracy depending on what weapon you are using. Now with that being said, I'm going to show you some techniques that I utilize as well as scenarios in Kovacs that will help you build a solid foundation of universal censoring. Just like in any competitive sport, first person shooters are no different. Competing against each other in an arena and the advantage going to whoever can provide the most consistent output of performance. This consistency is what I like to refer to as form. And just like any sport that requires a certain degree of hand-eye coordination, you will start to see parallels that directly can be applied to first person shooters. For this example, I'm going to refer to a sport that I personally sunk several years into, which is tennis. In tennis, there is a neutral position that a player must reset to after every stroke to allow them to travel a shorter distance when hitting the next forehand or backhand. Relative to first-person shooters, this neutral stance is a position that allows you to effectively track and reach your target without compromising your aim and smoothness, thus allowing you to lower the variables of inaccuracy by giving you a smaller surface area to build muscle memory on. This neutral position is more along the lines of a reset point. A point at which you can refer back to when you are done with an engagement, without being compromised by running out of space on the mouse pad or having shaky aim because your arm is extended or retracted too far in an uncomfortable position. When you're aiming with mouse and keyboard, you want to be in a position that allows you to move comfortably and smoothly to the upper right corner, left corner, left or right, bottom left corner, or bottom right corner of the screen. Can you get to one of the points of interest smoothly rather than shaky from the neutral position? To find your neutral position on the mouse pad, you want to either start Kovacs or find a game of your choice that you can jump into a map privately. Now that you've completed that, find a horizontal line such as a corner of a wall or one of the lines in the center of your Kovacs scenario. First, I want to give credit to Ron Rambo Kim, because this is a technique that I observed him doing and it has truly been a game changer for me. I want you to try your best to smoothly track the lines horizontally up and down. The neutral position is obtained when your arm or shoulder position can track that line comfortably. Now, it is completely fine if your arm is not in a 9 degree angle. Just as long as you can smoothly move to all the previously mentioned targets and reset comfortably, then that is an optimal neutral position. For the final step, which can be applied to controllers as well, is to always place your reticle in a position that allows you to travel the least amount of distance to hit a critical shot. So for instance, if you're using a sniper in Destiny 2 or even a wingman in Apex, you're not going to have the reticle pointing towards the ground while you're running to an engagement. You always want to have your reticle where the crit zone, aka headshot, is predicted to be. For me personally, I like to keep my reticle between shoulder to head height so it allows for more forgiveness in my shots. Because in the grand scheme of things, consistency is always better than hitting one nasty snipe out of every five shots.
Now speaking of the reticle, this brings me to my next point, and it may seem a little bit counterintuitive, however I promise you when I'm done this will all make sense and it will all come together. I want you to forget your reticle. Just forget it even exists. I know it sounds crazy, but stick with me. When you track the model to aim rather than trying to line up your reticle, the reticle soon becomes irrelevant. In fact, at some points it will even impede your aim, creating doubt and hesitation because the icon itself will obstruct the view of the target. And this will create uncertainty on whether or not the reticle is exactly on the head, thus losing precious seconds when you're dueling against a player that has a very fast target acquisition. Here is a rule of thumb that I want you to remember that is consistent and universal across the majority of FPS games. As long as the target is maintained in the center of the screen, whether it be through dynamic or static aim, you will have a very high chance of hitting your mark. The only time centered shots will miss is if the player is shooting projectile weapons such as a Kraber and Apex at far range targets. This is due to bullet drop off. Even with that caveat, this is why you see a lot of the pros out there grab a sniper rifle, instantly zoom in close range without even taking a millisecond to think before taking a shot and nailing it with extreme accuracy. Because they are confident that wherever they are aiming at, the target will always be maintained in the center of the screen. Strictly relying on centering and muscle memory rather than the reticle is the biggest contributing reason as to why these players can easily transfer aim skill from one FPS to another. Now before we get into the scenarios that will help you improve your ability to center, I've got a little bit of extra credit for those of you who are either perfectionists or care about the tiny details that will most definitely aid in consistency. I want you to have a notepad next to you or even one open on your computer, as well as a ruler. The next time you do exceptionally well while applying all the techniques that I've mentioned above, I want you to make note of all the variables that led to that. Measure how far your body was from the computer, how high your gaming chair was, what sensitivity were you using? How much physical exertion did you do prior to gaming? How much sleep did you have the night before? What did you eat in the morning or did you play on an empty stomach? Find as many variables as you can and try to repeat them to create a similar outcome in your next session. Yeah, I know this sounds very extreme and that's why I labeled it as extra credit. However, I do have the firm belief that every detail matters from the smallest to the biggest. And if you utilize all those details and create some sort of consistency, you'll have the upper hand over 90% of the players that are going against you. Just like how I keep my reticle from shoulder to head height to allow for more forgiveness, consistency is key. I would rather be playing 8 out of 10 days versus having one good day out of 10. Yes, there will be days where some players will just steamroll you, but the question is, can they keep it up an entire week? Can they keep it up an entire month? Or are they just a one-trick pony? These details are what separates a mediocre player from a great player. And just like how consistency can be maintained through form, it can also be maintained through the way we train. Which leads me into the Kovac scenario that I believe will aid you in solidifying the fundamental of centering. Now while most will assume that centering will revolve around click timing scenarios, I can assure you it is tracking that will benefit you more. In other words, having abysmal tracking will render click timing absolutely useless. Because how are you supposed to hit a target if you cannot maintain the target in the center of the screen? What most don't realize is that tracking actually begins as soon as the target enters your field of vision, not when you ADS. By the time you ADS, your target should already be centered and ready to be fired upon. So I'm going to present you with four Kovacs tracking scenarios that each should be done for five minutes before playing your game of choice. I recommend against challenge mode because being amazing at Kovacs does not directly translate into being amazing in every FPS. What most tend to do in challenge mode is to try to get the highest score possible, whatever means necessary, even if it means breaking form. The goal here is to build a solid foundation of smoothness and eye-hand coordination to keep the target centered without worrying about reticle placement. If these routines are done consistently and honestly, you will start to instinctually utilize this not only on the Kovacs targets, but also on live targets in-game. I will state these tracking scenarios in order of easiest to hardest. Also, if the last two routines are too hard, do 10 minutes of the first two scenarios rather than 5. The first tracking scenario I have for you is called SYW, aka Smooth Your Wrist. This is a fantastic warm-up to help you maintain target focus on a horizontal plane. In this scenario, I want you to forget about score and just prioritize the smooth tracking through centering. Do not make any sudden jolts or sporadic movements when the target switches its path. I want you to instead practice smoothly changing directions towards the target. This may seem very slow now, however with practice and consistency, smoothness will always equate to speed if executed in a precise manner. 
If you slow down and observe top FPS players such as It's Timmy, you will start to realize that every time they switch targets or when they acquire a target, the reticle is smoothly traveling from point A to point B. And this is consistent with a lot of other pros that I've observed in just about every FPS genre. For the next, we have vertical long strafe to maintain centering while targets are up in the air. Now this scenario may not be as beneficial for CSGO or Valorant players because those games primarily utilize horizontal tracking. However, for games such as Destiny 2, Halo, or Apex where there are a lot of vertical movements, this scenario will help enhance your ability to track and keep targets centered while in the air. Moving past that scenario, we have a combination of both vertical long strafe and smooth your wrists, which is the smooth bot Voltaic Easy, or the advanced alternative LDDH Fixed. These scenarios are easily some of my favorites because it mimics realistic sporadic movements that players tend to make while strafing. And to wrap up tracking, we have Thin Gauntlet to aid with smaller horizontal micro adjustments as well as providing targets that move at higher speeds to cover all varieties of tracking. Now, the last two scenarios I'm going to present to you revolve around click timing, however, the first will have a degree of tracking because again, click timing will be rendered useless if the target cannot be kept centered. So 3D switching is going to help simulate close to mid-range vertical and horizontal movement, also known as targets that are sliding or jumping. I recommend that you prioritize targets that are closest instead of the farthest because in games such as Apex or Destiny, players are harder to track when they are sliding or jumping aggressively towards you. And finally, we have our last scenario, which is pure click timing with stationary targets while utilizing dynamic aim. I want you to forget about shooting the target as fast as you can. Instead, I want you to focus on smoothly moving from one target to the next and firing when the target is centered, rather than when it is lined up with the reticle. Before I forget, please do these scenarios for five minutes each. If you don't have time, I'd rather you focus on the tracking scenarios rather than the click timing, as I find those more beneficial when it comes to centering. All right, so the main thing you should take away from all these scenarios is to rely on model aiming rather than reticle aiming, and smoothness should always be prioritized over speed. If you apply the techniques stated above consistently in-game or even apply them to the training scenarios I just mentioned, I can guarantee you that you will see a universal improvement with the fundamental of centering in just about every FPS you play. Now with that being said, I have to state a disclaimer to keep realistic expectations. Results are dependent on the player and how consistently these concepts are applied and how much time is invested in the presented scenarios. You will feel awkward at first while trying to climb the learning curve, which is fine and to be expected. However, if you keep moving forward, you'll have a skill set that can be applied not to one game, but to just about every FPS universally. This will allow you to get a head start on focusing on game mechanics rather than focusing on your aim. Before ending this video, I want to share with you guys a little bit of what's going on and as to why I've been absent for quite a long time on this channel. The past year has been quite tough work-wise and to be honest, I kind of got burnt out as a Destiny PvP main. I felt post Beyond Light that the PvP community had just been neglected with no new maps, which we still don't have by the way, separated PvP and PvE changes for weapons, exotic armor, and stasis, and on top of all that, all these feelings of disappointment had been compounded by the abundance of cheaters. So by the time they actually released an anti-cheat, it was a little bit too late for me and I was thoroughly burnt out by the game. Don't get me wrong, this is still one of my favorite games to play and I absolutely love this game, hence why I always come back to it because it has a special place in my heart. However, I just needed to take some time to explore different games and to see what's out there. I'm glad I did that. I tried out Apex, Halo, and Valorant, and the funny thing is, I felt as a player I became more well-rounded because each of those games had a specific skill set that is dynamically approved upon just by playing the game itself. Skills that I can directly apply to Destiny to become a better player. Well, now that I'm done rambling, I hope you guys found this video informative and it helped in some way, shape, or form. I'll be releasing more videos soonish. Being that I'm getting married next week, things are going to get a little bit busy. But I love you guys and I appreciate the time that you've taken out of your day to watch this video. Oh, almost forgot. Please like and subscribe and all that algorithm stuff. 